Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Saturday's edition of the DC Universe Daily in what's been a huge, controversial, massive, shocking, revealing week for the future of DC Universe under James Gunn and Peter Saffron. I told you that THR, the Hollywood Reporter, would be back with more reveals and, ex and exclusives about DC, its future and its past. We have an article from THR. We'll be going through it piece by piece. It's very, very interesting. I am wearing the pink shirt today. Pink that makes the girls wink. So should we get on with Saturday's edition of the DC Universe Daily? I say let's. Behind the, behind the fall of Henry Cavill's Superman. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's James Gunn. Now they've mocked up James Gunn here, wearing Cavill's Superman costume. Personally, I think that James has never looked this good. By the way, before we get started on this, what I'd like to say about a costume for James Gunn's brand new Superman, I've always wanted a comic book design. But maybe take a version of the costume from comics, get a comic book artist to actually update it. Yes, I want comic book artists and I want DC writers to be involved in DC Studios. Otherwise, what's the point of calling it DC Studios? Anyway, nearly two months of, of, to the day after Henry Cavill declared on Instagram he was back as Superman, I wanted to make it official, he said on October the 24th clip. The actor was forced to acknowledge that no, he will not be back after all as new DC Studios bosses, James Gunn and Peter Saffron chart a new course for the Man of Steel in a movie to be written by Gunn, which will feature a younger actor in the role. I will, after all, not be recruit, not be returning as Superman, Cavill said in a new post on Instagram on December the 14th, after being told by the studio to announce my return back in October, prior to their hire, this news isn't the easiest, but, th but that's life. The changing of the guard is something that happens. I respect that James and Peter have a universe to build. It's clear that Henry's had a discussion with James and Peter. They have or are looking for a role for him within the new DC universe. What do you think he'll play? Some people would like him to play the new Batman. Now, I think this would be freaking awesome. Henry would make an awesome Batman. Would you like to see Henry Cavill as DC Universe's Bruce Wayne and Batman? Maybe this is a thing that could happen. This will be interesting because this is the multiverse. You can have someone who looks like Superman playing Batman. That's the point. And maybe this is what James is going to do. I would love that. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. The sun setting of Cavill's time as Superman was the clearest indication yet that Gunn and Saffron are mounting a substantial overall of an overhaul of DC, a reboot that will cut significant, if not most, ties to the previous regimes. This is what I think, and we'll get to this in a minute. I think he will recast each member of the Justice League. I believe this now. There's some news about Gal here. Disappointing news. We'll get to that as well, but I, I think that Levi will remain a Shazam because basically Peter Saffron produced both the Shazam movies. I think the Suicide Squad universe will remain because James Gunn wrote and directed the Suicide Squad and basically steered a course for Peacemaker as well. So I think they stay the same, but the rest of the stuff changes maybe. Margot Robbie stays as Harley Quinn and things like that. That's my theory. I hope I'm wrong, actually. I want a total reset, but we will see. That handled DC movies for Warner Brothers. Cavill also shot a cameo in The Flash, one of four DC movies set to release in 2023. But sources say that, came, but that, that the cameo, along with the, that of Gal Gadda as Wonder Woman, is now being cut, given that the studio chose to not go forward with director Patty Jenkins' version of Wonder Woman 3. Now, this is very, very interesting. Now, cutting Cavill, what does this mean? If you cut Cavill from a DCEU movie 
and Gal Gadot from a DCEU movie, does this mean the DCEU is going to have a connection? Now, in Boris Kitt's previous THR article, the thinking behind cutting Cavill as Clark Kent in that little speed force scene is not to give people any false hope that Cavill continues as Superman. Now, basically, what we're seeing here is something very interesting because, you know, we know that Henry Cavill is no longer going to be Superman. But cutting Gal from the Flash movie is very interesting because we know she has a really, really huge, huge cameo in Shazam! Fury of the Gods. So what does that mean? Does that get cut? Because it's a bit difficult. That's a very important moment in the Shazam! movie. And if you cut it, what do you do? You have to change it. Now, David F. Sandberg has told us that they're happy with his movie, that they have no intention to reshoot anything. But we know that the DC live action is an ever-changing situation in flux. What happens one day may change on the next. Very interesting. Cavill found himself in a conf confluence of different headwinds at the studio. Dwayne Johnson pushed for his return via the much-hyped cameo in Black Adam and the potential linchpin for Johnson's own DC Universe franchise. But Black Adam has grossed 389 million worldwide. It's a soft performance, calling into question Johnson's much touted plans for a sequel and an eventual Adam vs. Superman movie, even before Gunn's decision. The studio had its own plans as new film co chiefs Michael DeLuca and Pam Abbey wanted to make a Man of Steel sequel, having Peaky Blinders creator Stephen Knight to write the treatment. Classic character Brainiac was to have been the villain of that piece, a source says. Now this is very, very interesting. So we know Stephen Knight, who created Peaky Blinders, a genius, had a plan for a Man of Steel sequel. That's huge, that could have worked. It could have been very cosmic, galactic, Brainiac in it. And they've said no to that. James has preferred to do something new, so this is very interesting. Would that sequel have worked or would it have bombed? Well, we'll never know now. Of course, it's very tragic to think that we could have got this and now we're not getting it. Is it for the best? Is it a mistake? Only time will tell. In the end, he was a pawn in Dwayne's failed attempt to control a piece of DC. One insider observes, yes. This observer has said that basically The Rock wanted, and his production company, Seven Bucks, wanted to control DC Studios. They wanted to run it, and they failed. Henry Cavill kind of jumped onto it because he's, part, you know, he's represented by Seven Bucks. And this was his only chance, a last desperate ditch attempt to get back his role as Superman. Now, let's be clear. This is a business. If Black Adam made a billion dollars, Cavill would be back as Superman now, with many spin-offs and sequels with Black Adam and the existing Justice League. But Black Adam didn't make any money. Black, I told you how important Black Adam was for them. Um, this was an experiment, and ultimately a failed experiment. This was the final nail in the coffin of the old DCEU. Cavill, sources say, did not have a deal in place to return as Superman. Only a verbal agreement that the studio would develop future projects. A verbal agreement they went back on. Welcome to Hollywood, everyone. He was paid 250000 each for his cameos. The actor in recent years had a resurgence thanks to starring in Netflix's popular fantasy series The Witcher, which saw him earning $1 million per episode. Cavill left the show this fall, although it's unclear if the promise of more Superman appearances was behind his exit. I think I can tell you right here and right now, the situation is this. That Henry Cavill quit The Witcher. Partially, probably, maybe he thought he wanted to focus on Superman, but mainly there was a fallout creatively. Gunn and Saffron are well aware of the sensitivities behind axing the popular Justice League cast by Zack Snyder, as well as the sensitivities of parting ways with high-profile and popular talent. Forgoing a call to agents or producers, the, exec the executives met with Cavill to discuss their plans and seemed to indicate a potential new role down the road. The pair have also made overtures to Ben Affleck, aka Batman, asking him to direct a DC film for them. 
while Jason Momoa, who may be done as Aquaman, has met with the duo as well, possibly about playing a new role. And we know that Lobo has been rumoured. Cavill has already lined up another franchise, Warhammer, at Amazon, which is a big deal. He will executive produce and star in that, so that's huge for Henry. Henry's always going to have work. As for Gunn, he responded to a fan who accused Warner Brothers and DC of stringing Cavill along to Goose Black Adam's opening, and this is true. This is true. Opening weekend, said Gunn in a comment on Instagram this week, everything with Black Adam happened before I was around, and this is true. This is not his fault. He's come in, he's made decisions. Decisions that a lot of others weren't willing to make. Credit to Walter Hamada, he was going to set up a new timeline. But it was problematic what he was attempting to do. But he was going to go there. He was going to go in a different direction. It would have caused problems as well. And he was planning to bring back the Snyderverse characters like Ben and Cavill in a crisis on Infinite Earth story as well. Can that still happen? Who knows? So yeah, so basically what, what happened here is that this was before James came along. That's your article. So um, a very interesting week. And what this article says, which is very interesting, that The Rock wanted literally to manipulate control of DC, basically DC Studios. And there were people and are people at the studio that still kind of want that to happen, but it's not going to happen anymore. It's clear, Mike Ab not Mike Abbey, Mike DeLuca and Pam Abbey, who are the co-chairs of Warner Brothers Pictures, wanted to do this sequel with Stephen Knight, the creator of Peaky Blinders, with Brainiac and Cavill being Superman. They wanted to continue the natural order of things with Snyder's people, Snyder's actors. And it's now not going to happen. I think at one point, this was definitely going to happen. After, you know, once Cavill came in for Black Adam, there was a plan. But for some reason, Zaslav didn't go along with this plan. He obviously agreed to allow Superman to return in Black Adam in a desperate attempt to get this movie to make some money. And I think that was the only thing that Zaslav ever had in mind. Was Zaslav's plan always to bring in Gunn? And Saffron, or was it, or, you know, was it a last minute decision? We simply do not know. These are the questions that need answering. These are the questions that most probably will never be answered. And what about Gal Gadot? Apparently now, we're reading rumours here from a source that she's been cut from the uh, Flash movie. Someone actually said something really funny and actually quite right. If only we could cut the Flash from the Flash movie, which we can't do. He's in every scene, it's a Flash movie, he is there. There is nothing that can be done about that. So no Wonder Woman, no Superman in the Flash movie, that's what it's looking to be. But as I said earlier, what does this mean for Gal Gadot's cameo in Shazam! Fury of the Gods? Something that's a little bit more important to the plot of the movie when she turns up at the end. In fact, before she turns up, she's mentioned several times in gags. So I don't think they can cut her from Shazam! Fury of the Gods. But why cut her from The Flash and then keep her there? This is the thing. Uh, James Gunn hasn't clarified this situation. He hasn't come in. I mean, next year's movies are not really anything to do with him. I mean, he, you know... Him and, Jay, and him and Peter are the co-chairs of DC Studios, so it's under their umbrella now, but they didn't make these movies. They didn't green light these movies. So it's very, very interesting. Um, so we can see that the Flash movie is still unlocked. And unlike what the Flash film news said, and um, basically what the other uh, DC movie account, which I think is owned by the, the same people, um, they said it was locked. It was never locked. The Flash movie was never locked. I never believed it was locked. And who knows when they're going to lock this movie. It's a very, very strange situation. So are they going to do any reshoots for this movie? I think it's unlikely. I think they're just going to cut several things out. Now, I know that Ben Affleck's Batman is in the beginning of this film. And he turns up at the end of the film. We know this. We've heard rumours. But I've seen it because I've seen a test screening. 
is Batfleck being cut from this movie? And if Batfleck isn't cut from this movie, that's interesting. Now, we remember that picture of Jason Momoa and Ben Affleck um, on the set of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Now, test screening audiences are saying they haven't seen him in the movie, but probably they will be holding that back anyway. So I ask again, as I asked yesterday, is Batfleck staying on? It's a very interesting situation. I doubt it. But as I said earlier, you know, everything is in flux and you just don't know what's going on. The truth of the matter is that James Gunn and Peter Saffron are trying to fix a mess. But if you're going to delete Snyder's cast, you have to delete your own James, I'm afraid. I don't think you're going to do that. I don't think you're going to replace uh, Zachary Levi as Shazam and all these different people in, in projects that you were involved with and Peter produced. Now, we have to look at Shazam. Shazam was a very good family movie, but it didn't make a lot of money, although it made a profit. Uh, so there's an issue there. The Suicide Squad was a very good film, but it didn't make a profit. Peacemaker was very successful on HBO Max and I really enjoyed it. You can't call The Suicide Squad a bad movie. You can't call Peacemaker bad, but ultimately, how can you keep one thing and get rid of others? So right now we have to ask the question, has Gal Gadot got a future in DC Universe? Gal Gadot is the most amazing, wonderful, perfect casting as Wonder Woman. She's one of the best comic book castings of all time. Her tone, she's classy, she's just a perfect Wonder Woman. To replace her as Wonder Woman may be more difficult and more problematic than replacing Cavill as Superman, because ultimately her Wonder Woman movie was successful, but her sequel wasn't so successful narratively. But that wasn't, well, I say it's not her fault, she was producing it, she hailed Patty Jenkins. It's interesting actually, since Patty Jenkins has come out pretty much confirming she won't be working on Wonder Woman any longer, Gal Gadot hasn't come out to say anything about her good friend, Patty Jenkins. Is she out along with Patty? Or is there more to come? Why is Gal being cut from, from the Flash movie? Because basically there's no there's no basically there's no consequences in keeping Gal's cameo in the Flash. I've seen it. It's not very much. It doesn't really point towards anything narratively. So it doesn't hinder anything in the future. So it's very, very interesting. Will Gal remain as Wonder Woman in DC Universe? We simply don't know. Now, if it's true that she's cut from the Flash movie, does this mean she's gone? Maybe, maybe not. But I think it's a huge decision from James Gunn, a bigger decision than cutting Cavill as Superman because she's been perfect. She's been brilliant and everybody loves her. But a new broom sweeps clean everyone. And ultimately, I have been championing this for a while. A reset. Now, for the people who say the DCEU should have its own universe because the Batman does and the Joker does, would you sell something in your shop that didn't make any money? The DCEU, for those of you who want to keep the natural order of things, doesn't make enough money for WB. It's a business. People keep on asking me what went wrong with the DCEU and it's a very difficult question to answer and I will tell you why. Because I love the Snyderverse and if you're a fan of art over money and a quick fix, the Snyderverse worked and it was great. It didn't make the money they wanted it to make. But what the MCU did was make it impossible to support art over box office because DC is an IP that's there to make money for Warner Brothers, just like Marvel has made money for Disney. That's why Disney bought Marvel, to make it in what it is today. It's not about art. The MCU isn't about art, and the Snyderverse was, and it's something we can all be really proud of. But Ultimately, the DCEU was formed when David S. Goyer had writer's block on The Dark Knight Rises. That became a movie. They wanted to kick off a franchise that could make them lots of money. 
but it became a really arty uh, franchise from Zack Snyder. I love it, but it didn't do what they wanted it to do. It caused mass panic, mass controversy. It split the fans. It just didn't do what they wanted it to do. And they got rid of Snyder. And they tried to basically rebrand what Snyder had already done. That was their first big mistake. If you want to investigate what went wrong with the DCEU, and maybe, maybe it was bringing in Snyder and saying, well, maybe an art, arty kind of auteur kind of director, storyteller, wasn't the right way to go for a mainstream universe. Interestingly, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy was very arty. He, he is an auteur and it worked. But ultimately you're talking about a DC universe, not a Batman trilogy. And I think the mistake was this. Clearly doing an arty auteur type of franchise was never going to bring in the money that they wanted. So the mistake was from the very beginning. They own the DC Studios WB. They have so many comic book writers who could have led a DC franchise from a mainstream general audience and could have started making the type of money that Marvel was doing. They brought in Nolan because Nolan had been successful and this is how Hollywood works. They thought, well, he's done it there. Why can't he do it here? But they knew he was a very kind of, he, he, he was a filmmaker who believes in realism. And realism in comic book movies isn't exactly a marriage made in heaven in terms of how you, you know, how you appeal to the general audience. The general audience, when they think about comics and superheroes, think about escapism. And they don't really want a real world Superman and a real world Batman. So the problem was from the very beginning. Once they had Snyder there, they should have let him do his thing. Uh, allow the screaming and crying to continue until he finished. But they didn't do that. Justice League really showed that these people didn't have a clue. And really, it, the DCEU was dead from Justice League. And it's been trying to dig itself out of a hole ever since. That's what went wrong with the DCEU, plain and simple. And James Gunn and Peter Saffron are trying to clean up this mess. They're trying to do what should have been done in 2013, which is start a mainstream, connective, cinematic universe. Now, is it too little, too late now? We will find out in the next few years. But I am excited about the future of DC. We've actually seen a leaked logo, a new logo for DC Studios. It's looking really, really good. Some people think it's rubbish. Well, get used to it. And there's kind of a design for Aquaman. They're saying that we're definitely going to get a brand new actor as Aquaman. So it's a it's a very, very interesting situation what we're getting. Clearly, I think, I believe, this will be a lot more comic book accurate, everyone. And this is what we're looking at. So if you're a DC Comics fan, I think you're going to be very, very pleased. If, you, if, you're, if you're a Snyder fan, you're going to be upset. People saying, you know, I'm done, I'm not coming back, things like that. These are emotional reactions I can understand, and that's okay. But there's a whole audience out there who haven't consumed DC live action. And they're the ones James Gunn and Peter Saffron are after. They don't really care if you're leaving because you haven't been able to make DC enough money. With all your hype on the internet, with all your comments on the internet, you and your support for DC hasn't brought in the profits that they need. So they don't really care when you say you're done. Of course they want the Snyderverse stands to stick around. The more viewers, the more butts in seats, the better. But ultimately, you haven't brought enough profits. You can say, you know, Man of Steel did okay and BVS did okay. But for them, it hasn't been good enough. And the fallout to BVS was a big problem. It's cost so many people their jobs over at WB. And now... We, we kind of start afresh. Um, it does look like we're going to recast the entire, the entire Justice League. Um, they're obviously trying to delete Snyder's actors. Um, because by keeping Snyder's actors, there's all that, that, it, just it just harkens back to what Snyder did. And I think a fresh start is the best thing here. I want to know what you think about this. Um, would you be upset? 
if Gal Gadot left as Wonder Woman. For me, Gal Gadot is a wonderful Wonder Woman. Um, would I be really upset if she left? Not necessarily. Again, it depends who they're going to bring in to replace her. Because, you know, Henry Cavill and Gal have been very popular castings as these characters. Now, Gal's first movie did really well and did a lot better than Man of Steel did. So she started off in a very popular fashion. And Zack Snyder needs to be credited. But here's the problem with keeping them. It was the problem they had during Justice League and while why Whedon and those actors were at war. Basically, Gal Gadot and the rest of these actors are Snyder loyalists and they don't want Snyder loyalists there stirring trouble, doing leaks like it's been, like it's been going on, trying to basically destroy what they're trying to build. Ezra Miller is a Snyder loyalist. I think all this trouble he's been causing is somewhat purposeful to destroy what Walter Hamada was trying to do. In a lot of areas, he succeeded in. So basically, as far as James Gunn and Peter Saffron are concerned, these people have to go. Now, Jason Momoa is a Snyder loyalist, but he's not so much a loyalist to cut his own throat. This is why he's met with James and made it clear he does want a future. He loves Zack, respects Zack, but he won't do anything to cause any problems. The other actors, I feel, will, and that's why they had to go. Whedon had problems with Gadot. Problems, you know, Whedon had problems with Ray Fisher, which is pro who is probably the biggest Snyder loyalist out of all of them. So he will not be involved again. That's clear now. We are getting a new cyborg. It looks like we're probably getting a new Wonder Woman, definitely getting a new Superman and probably a new Batman, Green Lantern and all of this. So a new future is being forged. I will always love and respect Zack Snyder's Snyderverse. I think it's excellent. I think it's the highest of art. We've never seen this kind of art form in comic book adaptions. It's been absolutely fantastic, but we do need to move on. And I'll say to the people who want the DCEU to continue and think it's okay because what it's what they want, for me, it's what's best for DC. And as long as we're going to build something special here, I'm more and than you know, I'm more than excited for it. I am not going to tell you that what James Gunn is doing is definitely going to work. I'm not going to tell you what James Gunn is is doing is definitely not going to work. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. We have to wait and see what they do. We will find out early next year, probably January. His, you know, some of his slates, some of his castings, we're probably going to find out who he's going to cast as Superman. He probably knows already who he's going to cast as Superman. James Gunn, as I keep on saying, is under immense pressure. He's one of the most tweeted, tweeted ads on Twitter. His name being added all day. I'm adding it, but I'm not being abusive. I'm being funny. I'm being, you know, I'm just making some interesting points. I don't think attacking him and bringing up the past does any good. As I say, I can understand why some people are upset, but the DCEU has been struggling for many years. David Zaslav and Discovery have come in to build a huge company, to make it successful. They need to raise $3 billion because of the way the studio was run before. Yesterday, we saw a Barbie trailer, a terrible progressive movie, um, you know, a mess, you see it, and it's like someone's chucked some paint on a camera lens. Now that movie is going to fail. It is released around the same time as Oppenheimer. What would you rather go and see, Barbie or fucking Oppenheimer? This is what this studio was doing, allowing people like Margot Robbie to do insane things that are never going to work. So this is what David Zaslav has, is fighting against. He's trying to build something that makes money, that can entertain us. And it's not just about DC, it's about the whole of Warner Brothers. He's trying to rebuild Warner Brothers and rebuilding something that's broken is very difficult. And we go back to DC, rebuilding DC, making it successful, because DC has had some successful films in the history of DC live action, but it's never had the success of the MCU. What I want to see is great movies 
in a connective franchise with a connective tissue. But focus on the movies, always focus on the movies, but you can focus on your story arc as well. If James Gunn can do both, then call me sold on the plan. This has been Saturday's edition of the DC Universe Daily with me, Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. And I'll see you again in the next video. Until we see each other again, goodbye, au revoir, I'll finish it.